Hello viewers, this is Elimu TV, a station where you get to watch and learn. Welcome to our history class, Form 1, and the topic of discussion is sources of information on history and government. And the subtopic today, you're getting to written sources of information. And your teacher today is Trojab Michira. Welcome all and let us learn. Now, learners, what do we expect at the end of the lesson? We need to state the sources of information on history and government and also state the advantages and limitations of the sources of information on history and government. Now, in our introduction, we did say that today we're getting to written sources of information. And let me take you back on what we have already done. We did look at and written source of information and now today we are going to written sources of information. Now, written sources, these are the recorded information in the, in the form of a drawing or the printed world. So meaning information is, information is written or drawn, or rather also printed. Now, examples of written sources, um, they include, we have got newspapers, we have got journals, right? For example, that is, that is, that is a journal. This is a written information. It is documented, unlike the unwritten source, which was not documented. But for the recent written source of information, it is a documented document. For example, we have given an example of journals. We have given an example of a newspaper. For example, that is a journal. And a journal is a collection of, uh, of many printed articles, unlike a newspaper. So there's a difference between a newspaper and a journal. Those are examples of... Um, the written source of information. Now, can we get to look at what are some of these advantages of written source, uh, a written source of information? One, they preserve history since events are recorded for future reference. For example, if you go to the archives, you can get a Daily Nation, which is a newspaper that was written in 1963. For example, you have got the session paper number 10 of 1963. You can still find that in the archives. Now, the written source is always documented and it, it records information, or rather it preserves information since events were recorded for future reference. And also, another advantage of a written source, it is that written records can be distributed to literate people all around the world. What does it mean by literate people? These are people who are able to read and understand. Now, for example, a book can be published in the US and it can be distributed to all the continents in the world. That means that written records can be distributed to written uh, literate people all over the world. Another example is that a newspaper can be printed in the, in the Nairobi printing press, and also someone who is in Western, someone who is in the coast province, can be able to access the information that is written. That is an advantage of a written source. It can be accessible to all literate people. And also, written records can be translated into different languages. A good example is the Bible, right? The Bible was originally written in Hebrew. Now, as you look, the Bible we have now, it's written in English. We have got Kiswahili. We have got other local languages. Now, meaning it has been translated. Now, I've given you a, a good example of the Bible, right? It was written originally in Hebrew. Now, if you get to look at the translation process, it has taken a, 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 great, a great milestone. Now, the good advantage of a written source is that it can be translated to different languages. Now, however, written sources also have got their limitations. For example, at times acquiring written records are expensive. For example, if I may, I may get to ask, how many of you get an access to the newspaper every day? Very few, right? Because a newspaper costs 60 shillings. Right? That is Kenya shillings, 60. And not all of us can access the 60 shillings. Now, in that case, these written records are very expensive to acquire. Not all of us can get to acquire the written records. And also, they are limited to literate people in the society, but not useful to literate. For example, suppose if I don't know how to read, do you think the newspaper will be beneficial to me? Do you think the written record will be beneficial to me? It won't. Now, in that case, the written records are only limited to a certain group of people in the society and they are only the literate people. And also, finally, another limitation of written records is that reading uh, written records is often time consuming. For example, you can't read a thousand pages in a day. You'll have to take a while, 
right? So, or example, for example, if, if I've got a, a novel that has got 300 pages, you can just, just read that in a day. So meaning it takes time. It's time consuming. Reading from page one to the last page, it often takes a lot of time. Now, class, as we conclude, there's an assignment for you. Can we get to state advantages and limitations of using written source as a source of information? We just gave a few advantages and we gave a few limitations. Now, can you go do more research and get to tell us what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of written records? And for our reference, can we get to use Evolving World History Form 2? And as always, this is a Limu TV, a station where you get to watch and learn. Kindly watch us live via, you, uh, via, via YouTube, and get our lessons on, youth, on YouTube. And also you can text us via our SMS line with a number there. Also, we, have go, we, also, we always give um, live classes on Facebook. You can get to our Facebook page, which is Elimu TV. And also you can follow us on Twitter at Elimu TV underscore Kenya. Thank you so much and see you in the next class.